Hello everybody, I thought I'd do a little video now that we're back home, safe and sound. I want to talk about the trip, the, the route we took, what we do different, the mistakes we made, and maybe what I would do different for the next time. So to start from the beginning, I thought the route, the route we took was, we started around February 2016, I think it was on mid-February 16th. We set off from Switzerland, went to Italy, and then from there we took the route down to the Balkans, all the way along the coast, Croatia, Montenegro, Albania, Greece, then went around the coast of Greece and back up to Turkey. And from there we stayed in Istanbul a couple of days, really cool city, and then back down again along the coast, going in and out, zigzagging a little bit from the coast to the inside of the country. The coast is okay, it's a bit it's very touristy to start, but as the further south you get, it's, it gets less and less touristy, I guess, and quite nice. And then once we had enough of the coast, we were able to swim, even though it was, I think it was April-ish, we, we were able to swim, so I was happy with that. And then from there we went inland to Cappadocia, the, what to explain, probably know them, the little turrets of, of sandstone. We stayed a long time, and I think we stayed over a week. Longer than we thought and longer than we wanted to actually, but it was very, very nice. It was very cool to hike around the area and we took the balloon flights, which I will have to look at my cheat seat because I can't remember what it was. We took Macan balloons, which were all right. We were expecting a little bit more, but they did give us a breakfast. Breakfast buffet was okay. And then the flight was okay. It took the same route we already hiked before, so it wasn't, yeah, it was a bit bad luck for us, but it was definitely recommendable and I'd definitely do it again. It's an amazing view. We took the route from, from the inland to the Black Sea coast, the D915, officially the most dangerous road in the world. Could argue that, but it was very nice, adventurous, it didn't take long, I think it was like two hours from, it's like a mountain pass and it's all the, with, uh, with still, it, even in the late spring, early summer, still had huge bits of snow, which are probably there a whole year. And yeah, fantastic scenery. I think the whole region there would be worth taking a closer look. That's amazing, I think. Definitely to go back there. So, and then from there, as soon as we reached the coast, it was fairly quick we went to, to Georgia and Armenia. Definitely great for, over, for overlanding. Uh, the, the wild camping spots, the people, the food, very friendly, no hassle. At least in, Arme uh, in Georgia, the, the police is very good, doesn't hassle you. The border procedure is straightforward. Just show up in without an hour within an hour we were inside from there there's no problem at all um, we took a good look around uh, Georgia went into the mountains to the old military road and then back down tried a lot of food a lot of wine a lot of beer which Georgia is for famous for I spent some time in uh, Tbilisi the capital arranging the visas for Iran and then we kept going south to Armenia. Well, Armenia is also quite nice, a bit more hassle with the police. They stop you every day, a few times. Definite recommendation here is to have all your paperwork in order, the, the insurance, the, the visas, which have to get stamped in at the, at the border, and maybe to have a little camera recording while you're driving, so you have a little bit of proof if the police does stop you that you are not speeding or whatever. Fortunately we had Uliana with, with us and she speaks Russian so every time they came up we would just be able to speak Russian and they would leave us alone. We never had to pay any fine or anything in that direction. Um, Armenia is really nice, very green, much more rural and a lot poorer than Georgia is. 
The roads have bad, con fairly bad condition, but they drive slower, which is very, it's quite dangerous in Georgia where they drive like crazy. But all in all, really nice. The people are really, really friendly. Yeah, like I said, camping spots anywhere. They don't seem to have a problem. We just want to pull up and camp anywhere. They just maybe come and say hello, ask you what you're doing, and that's it. Yes, yeah, very good. And there, from there on, we went already to Iran. Which the border procedure was very easy. We did the local carne with um, Hussein Carne service, which was was good. He, he arranged everything. He wasn't there personally, but he had some people there, which arranged. It took about four or five hours to get all the paperwork done, but we were just there. They <laughs> invited us for lunch, gave us tea, coke, and all that. And everybody very, very friendly. As all of Iran, Iran was probably the most uh, surprising country and everybody always seems to be aware of Iran, it's a dangerous place, but not at all. It was probably the friendliest people, the most hospitable people. It was nearly hard to say no to certain people, <laughs> or that they wouldn't invite you for, for tea, for showers, whatever. <laughs> It was very good. Uh, we took a big route around Iran. I'm not going to go too much into detail about that because there's a we've, on our blog, which I'll probably I'll put a link in the description. Paperwork-wise, Iran is fairly straightforward. You have to get a visa, which is a very easy one. You come the last day of the visa, you, of the visa, you still come in the country and you still have one month. The problem is the carnet. You need one. There is either the, the version which we went for, the local one, which is a bit more, it's probably more expensive. We pay $600 for the car, motorbikes I think are 300-ish, and bicycles nothing, that's a good thing. Uh, and you, there's no more fees than that. But if you want to extend for another month, it, you have to pay again the 600, uh, the 600 US dollars. It's... It depends for the person. For us, it didn't make sense to make a carne du passage because we'd have to deposit a lot of a big chunk of money in Switzerland to get it. So it wasn't really an option for us. It was for us better to just pay one six hundred. That was it because Iran is the only country on a route which needed it. So there was no point. Um, also, the, the benefits of this, you have Hussein, which is a very friendly guy, knows his stuff. Uh, and anytime you have big, you have problems or anything of that region, you can, you can call him up and he will be very happy to help. We had some brake issues once and we needed a mechanic and he was able to, to sort everything out. So for that, definitely recommendable. He also has a hostel, but we didn't go, we didn't have time. Uh, and yeah, and this Iran is where everything went a little bit different than we expected and planned. Uh, our first plan was to go up to, to Mongolia through the stands, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, all these. But Turkmenistan failed us. They didn't give out. As of summer 2016, all the people we met, we didn't meet anybody who got the transit visa for Turkmenistan, apart from some people which organized it in their own country. So this uh, meant for us that either going through Afghanistan or to turn back and go around the Caspian Sea or from Azerbaijan to take, take the ferry from Azerbaijan. So that was a bit of a kind of big problem for us because it meant uh, we weren't that flexible with time. And so it meant either to stop a trip or to or to to keep going. Afghanistan is not really an option. We try. We went to the embassy, but they wouldn't give us a visa, and I wouldn't have taken it anyway, because <laughs> the road there uh, was going through Taliban country, so not really an option. Uh, from there, we then we were in um, Mashhad, which is very close to the Afghan and Turkmen border. Really nice city as well. And we had like I think three or four days left on our Iran visa. So we had to go 2,000 kilometers back to the Turkish border 
uh, to kind of decide what we wanted to do because we couldn't, well, we didn't want to extend for another month the, the local carne, which would have cost another $600. As soon as we were back in Turkey, we decided we're not going to keep going on the trip. That we, this was it, and we're just going to keep up going up to Moscow where we had some, we had some of Oliana's family. Uh, so we went through Georgia, up through the whole Caucasus of the Russian Caucasus, which was quite nice, interesting country. Volvo, uh, Volvograd was an interesting city before Stalingrad, a very important city in the Second World War. And then already Moscow, which was a really, really amazing city. I've been there before in the winter, but summer is definitely much nicer. The family, Yelena's family showed us around. We went out to the dacha, which is like the, the country house, went to the sauna, ate a shitload of strawberries, and ate generally a load of, yeah, a load of food. A lot of eating there. And then from there on, went to Ukraine and to, to visit more of Yelena's family. Ukraine is also a cool country. We spent some time around places we haven't been before. And then near to the Karpats Mountains or Carpathian Mountains, let me say in English, uh, where Juliana's family lives. And we spent, again, I think we spent two or three weeks there, I can't remember, but it was very nice again. And then from there, it's pretty much two or three days, and we're back in Switzerland and Italy again. So back home, and that was the trip for us. All in all, I think it was nearly five or six months. So now I'll talk about, I guess, what I would do different for the next time, or for the next trip, or whatever. Uh, or what would I do the same, kind of, yeah, what mistakes we made. Probably the biggest mistake we made was time. We should have probably planned a bit more. Money-wise, we were, we were good. We planned around eight to 10,000, I think, in the end, euros. We spent around eight to nine, I think. The car cost another 9,000, which I was able to sell for a little bit more than that, even because I bought it quite run down and restored it a little bit and upgraded quite a lot of things. And in the end, I was in space, be able to sell, sell it for, for more than I invested. So it was, that was good. Um, the car itself, I would definitely recommend that car. It's a small car, fits anywhere, doesn't use lots of petrol has enough space inside, we had the pop-up tent. I will put a link in the, in the description to a video which I made before from the car explaining everything, if that interests you. And then from, um, spent around, I think it was 1,500 per month, euros again. And that was more than enough. We, we lived well on that money, we didn't have to save, we didn't have to... Uh, we weren't living luxuriously, but we were living very nice. We were able to do like balloon rides, rent kayaks and go into museums and stuff. We didn't have to be on the cheap, which was nice. The trip, you can definitely do it cheaper. You can do it more, much, much more expensive. But I think all in all, it was a very cool trip and definitely doable again. Um, another thing which I might do different the next time First of all, I think I would take more time, but if I would do it in the same schedule again, is to organize more paperwork before. Meaning that probably do the visas, try and get the Iran visa sorted and be more on a schedule. Uh, which I don't quite like, so for me personally, I think I would take more time to be able to be more flexible. So, because my, Getting visas in any country is a lot always a hassle. You have to go one day to the embassy, wait four or five days, and you, most of the time you don't want to spend that much time in the capitals or whatever. So what now? We're back to working. We moved to Barcelona, which is a very cool city. We lived here before. We've already been here for a couple of months. And now we're just going to be working a little bit and we have, uh, we've got a nice, a nice flat which we sold the camper again as I said and we're living in, in a in a bigger space now but it's very nice we want to we want to do some small travels around around Spain and maybe we, we've got a bit into biking now so we're doing a little bike so we're doing some bike trips I'm doing one next week from Barcelona to Valencia might do a video about that 
and yeah there's probably a lot of plans I'm taking sailing lessons so there might be some adventures coming up with that and yeah probably lots of stuff coming up soon I will try and do a little bit more videos now more about maybe a little one about Barcelona if you've got yeah I'm living in Spain traveling around Spain or maybe something about boats we'll see if you've got any questions or or comments just leave them down in the comment section and I'll try and answer them